Hi, I'm Lisa Lebroni and welcome to the Conservation Starter. So on the 18th of November, it's Ask a Conservator Day, where conservators around the world will answer questions about what they do. So what is a conservator? Who are the people that make objects last? Who are people behind the scenes, behind the gloves that get to touch and see objects in ways that not many people get to do? Who tries to stop the changes wrought by time? Who fixes those objects that have been destroyed by botched amateur art restoration attempts? We are conservators. Not conservationists, not conservatives, not conservatories, but conservators. We're sometimes known as object doctors, magicians, and glorified cleaners. But even more often, we're not known about at all. So if you Google search what is a conservator, you'll get some pretty interesting results, especially if you're in the US. So that's why I often put a word in front of conservator, like art conservator or museum conservator, so you have a better idea of what we do. But not all conservators work with art and not all conservators work in a museum. So let me tell you about what a conservator is. A conservator is a trained professional whose job is to care for, protect and safeguard cultural material. Basically, we make things last. And sometimes the things we work with have a really high monetary value. For example, those paintings by the masters that are sold at auction for millions of dollars. But sometimes the things we work with don't have very high monetary value. For example, maybe personal treasures of yours that you want conserved by a conservator or uh, other things that might not have monetary value, but they have other kinds of significance. For example, cultural or aesthetic or historical. So what changes do conservators manage? These can be physical, like a ceramic pot breaking or a paper object being torn, but they also can be chemical, like an old photograph that changes color over time or an old newspaper clipping that goes really yellow or brittle. There are so many factors that can change objects and some of them can include objects not being made from materials that are meant to last, natural disasters such as fire and floods, someone dropping an object, objects being stored in things that are not archival or not meant for the long term, uh, light damage, pollution, insects literally eating the object and also losing all information you have about an object so you don't know where it's come from or what it is. All these kinds of changes are known as the agents of deterioration. If you want to know more, there's some incredible resources online. I'll put them down in the description box below. But also there's another conservation YouTube channel called Dig It With Raven. Raven talks about all things conservation and archaeology and has an incredible series called The Ten Agents of Deterioration. I definitely recommend checking it out. Now I want to talk to you about how you become a conservator. There are lots of different ways, but usually someone who wants to be a conservator goes to study at a formalized course at a university. It can take many years and it's usually at a master's or a postgraduate degree level. But like I said, it can vary from country to country. I have a video that goes into way more detail about this soon. So what do conservators look after? These can be immovable things, things like buildings, monuments and cave paintings, but it also is often more movable things, things that can be collected by galleries, libraries, archives and museums, things that can still be quite big like ships and also lighthouses, but also really small things like miniature books and coins. We also work with all types of materials. Every material that you can think of that's been used by humans or created by humans, that needs to be conserved. I can guarantee you it's been collected somewhere. These are things like books, paintings, paper, ceramics, glass, metals, plastics even, and time-based media, things that are made digitally. They're now being collected and will need to be conserved. So what type of conservators are there? Basically those objects that I just listed, they're made in really different ways, they'll age really differently, and they'll need to be cared for in such different ways. So it makes sense that we have conservators that specialize in different material types. They'll usually be experts in a very specific material. For example, we have paintings conservators or metals conservators. So I'm a paper conservator, so I usually work with paper but I also work with books and photographs. I've also been known to go inside a lighthouse light and clean it. I've also crawled all over a naval helicopter to prepare it for display. I've handled a 1500 year old manuscript to help it be digitized and currently I'm working on a globe that dates from 1602. I'm also treating some contemporary indigenous lino prints to prepare them for a display. Literally every day is different and I love my job. 
So our jobs get pretty diverse even though we specialize in one thing. Conservators are even working with Dorothy's red shoes from the Wizard of Oz, they're working to conserve Barbie dolls and even a suit from NASA that went to the moon. So we work with all kinds of things. And sometimes conservators don't necessarily specialize in the material but more like with a function. For example we have exhibition conservators or conservation scientists so they specialize in analyzing cultural heritage. So what do we do? From what you've heard, you can probably tell day by day it changes dramatically. Sometimes I can be on the bench working for hundreds of hours to conserve material. Sometimes I'm creating supports that are both aesthetic, so they look good when objects are on display, but also really support objects. Sometimes I frame items and sometimes I prepare them to be packed and transported all around Australia or overseas to go on loan. I also do a lot of hands-off things like helping control the storage and display temperature so it's at human comfort levels but also the best for the object. I help control light levels so the objects don't fade. I also monitor and maintain objects while they're on display, such as cleaning them. And this can sometimes be the less glamorous part of the job, but sometimes cleaning does involve me going up 10 meters high in a scissor lift that I'm operating to clean some incredible ghost net sculptures hung in the museum foyer. That is fun. We do examination, investigation, and analysis, of course, while documenting it all. And to do this, we use magnification and lights and scientific equipment. And it helps us see objects in really different ways and really close and in ways that you might not often expect. So conservators get really used to seeing things very differently. For example, when I look at a 300 year old book, I'll see standing on the edges of the paper from where someone handled it. I might see some creases on the corners from where someone turned the page. I might see a desiccated insect that had been left there from hundreds of years ago that's left impressions on the pages. And I might see the layer of dirt and dust that accumulated on the top edge from where it had been stored in shelves for hundreds of years. Conservators see a lot of things and in really interesting ways. And like any job, there is a lot of administration, meetings, emails, writing policies and procedures, just stuff that's pretty universal no matter what job you're in. What conservators do can be quite big. What we conserve and how we conserve things can actually change the cultural record. So there are some rules that we follow. This includes making sure our treatments are reversible as much as possible. So whatever we do, we can undo. And this can be quite hard when you're cleaning an object because you can't exactly put dirt back on once you've taken it off. But if I'm putting hinges on to a paper item so it can go in a window mount to be framed and put on display, those hinges can be removed later. This includes making sure our treatments are detectable. We want to make sure that if we're adding things onto an original item that they're not mistaken for the original. So that means when you see them up close you can tell that they're an addition. So this includes when a paper has a really big loss, I'll often infill it and repair it so that it's stable and you won't have any further damage. But also if it's on display, your eye won't be drawn to the big gaping hole. Instead, you get to look at the object as a whole. And I also make sure that infill is reversible. We always try and use a minimal approach. The motto is less is more. Far often, good storage and good handling is far better than any treatment that I could do. When we are treating things, we use sympathetic materials that will not change over time and will not then impact the object. And we also approach our treatments on an object by object basis. We sort of have standard treatments we can do, but we look at each object individually. We make decisions and consult with the stakeholders for each object. So those are some of the rules that we have. So where do conservators work? We can work in institutions, so in galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Sometimes huge national ones like the British Museum, the National Library of Australia, the Smithsonian in the US, but also we work in smaller institutions, state-based ones, or even small regional institutions. You can also find us in private practice where we work directly with the general public to make sure their treasures are looked after. And also private conservators work with institutions to help them conserve their collections. For example, we don't have a paintings conservator in our team. So whenever we have a painting in the collection that needs conservation, we go to a private paintings conservator. Conservators work in conservation laboratories. In Australia, we shorten that to ConLab. I don't know if anywhere else abbreviates it like that, but Australians like to shorten things. Conservation labs are very 
similar to scientific laboratories. So we have a lot of chemicals and chemical storage. We have fume hoods to extract those fumes. We also have beakers and lots of other weird and wonderful equipment and tools we borrow from every other industry. So if you want to know more about what's in a conservator's toolkit, definitely check out my other video. I'm hoping my channel and this video can bring conservators out from behind the scenes and change the stereotype of conservators being introverts, stuck in a back room somewhere, covered in dust, far preferring to interact with objects than humans. I'm trying to make our work more visible and also invite you in to see what we get to see and experience things that not many other people get to experience, but conservators get to as part of our day-to-day -day work treating objects. Maybe you can start being a conservator of your own treasures and heirlooms. So conservators take their jobs very seriously, but we also have a lot of fun. So I invite you to have a conversation about conservation. Participate in Ask a Conservator Day on the 18th of November. Ask a question any day, actually. Just put it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or want to know more about conservation, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss a video. And there's going to be so many more like this coming. My name's Lisa Laroni, and thank you for joining me on The Conservation Starter. A conversation, conversation, conserva, conserva, conserva.